Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Simido. Thanks. Thanks, Dustin. Nice to be here. Good to be here tonight. Thanks, local scene. Whew, I'm already winded. So I had a wiffle ball league, you know. You probably think you had a wiffle ball league, but it wasn't like my wiffle ball league. You probably played at picnics, cookouts, or the beach. But uh, I played at the Wiffle Dome. So my league was pretty much better than yours, but. The one thing my league had that yours probably didn't have was full stats. We had stats that you probably never even heard of. Uh, we had wins over replacement. And we had Guar, which was a stat to see how many kids in the neighborhood liked the band Guar. We also had a stat called Rage. And that wasn't for the kids in the neighborhood that liked the band Rage Against the Machine, no. That was for how many fits of rage were thrown during the games. We kept track of that. Bobby, our friend Bobby got pretty feisty. So we had an American League president, an NNO president, and a commissioner. And I don't think I started off as commissioner, but I, I became the commissioner. And I'm still the sole representative of this, of this league. Pretty much defunct. But. We used to have this other kid who would do the stats before I took over, and he had binders and binders of stats. And he told me this story once. He said him and this other kid saw one of the neighborhood girls changing in their front window. So we call him Peaky Binders. That's his nickname. So we had to get kids for the league. And I'm pretty proud of myself. I got the only black kid in the neighborhood to join the league. Wiffleball News said he broke the color barrier. We loved having Stevie aboard. Stevie was in. And the whole neighborhood was middle class, you know. Um, Stevie's parents were maybe a tinge below middle class. You know, if I was to guess... They probably didn't have trash pickup, just to give you an idea of where he's coming from. Uh, so I was, I'd go over there, and I was kind of a little kid jerk. You know, I didn't know any better. I immediately go into my Robin Leach. This is the lifestyles of the rich and famous. And his parents laughed. They loved it. They, uh, they would always be like, where's the camera? Where's the camera? And I'd always like catch them in the driveway, like bringing in their groceries. And I'd always say, it's nothing like champagne wishes and caviar dreams for these two. And they, they were good sports. They were good sports. And uh, Stevie had a sister, Sherry. And she was a little older. We didn't get along too well, you know. Uh, she ended up uh, working at Burger King, and uh, when I went through the drive-thru, I ordered, and I said, um, you know, they said, pull up, and got to the drive-thru, and it was Sherry. Sherry was at the window, like, oh. So I... I gave her the money, you know, and then she went to, and I'm like, I'm not getting my food. I just knew it. She came back with the food, and she said, okay, 
Now sing for your dinner. And uh, that was pretty typical for this Burger King, that you had to sing for your food anyways. So it wasn't no big surprise. So, of course, I start. You know, my sherry you more. Give me my Burger King. Oh, there's more. Oh. Give me my Burger King. You can take some fries if you want. But you work there, so you probably eat enough fries. My sherry. <laughs> There's, there could be more to that. I'll take a cardboard crown, and you can be my burger queen. My sherry, you more. You can call me Frazzle J. Or you can call me Frazzle G. That makes more sense. But don't play with my fragility. I'd like to play with your fertility. And then maybe get a cup of tea. Something like that. I mean, she probably did give me my food after that. I like your little freckle face. What time do you guys stop serving breakfast? I think I could make that. Stuff like that, you know. We'd always come up with crazy lines. You can call me Frazzle G. So, so Stevie, you know, he, he didn't mind his sister. and That kind of all went away. But Stevie led the league in doubles. Mick doubles. Yeah, he really liked McDonald's better. <laughs> so once we got our food together and all the players, we'd, we'd start playing a little wiffle ball, you know. And uh, then Bobby's mom would come out, Mrs. B. She'd come out with a box of fudgicles, frozen fudge pops, you know. And she was like, when a wife interrupts a, like a guy's only poker game, you know, we didn't want them. We just wanted to keep playing, but fudge will break. So we're eating our fudge pops, and I turned to Stevie. I go, Stevie, is this what yours looks like? And he just laughed, you know. He said, no, bigger. <laughs> and then I would say stuff, crazy stuff like, Mrs. B, these are my tongue's favorite. And she would say stuff like, I'm going to keep an eye on you. That's for sure. Mrs. B, uh, <clears throat> she was a Ruthian woman, you know? And by that, I mean she was like Babe Ruth. She was a real babe. And... Uh, like Babe Ruth, she would take batting practice in the middle of the dirt road in bare feet, you know, very much like the Babe. And she liked to play the percentages, you know. She would always say, pitch to me or I'll call the pound on you. And she was right, you know. Most of the kids in the neighborhood, most of us, we had dogs running loose around the neighborhood. So, you know, we never called that bluff. But we had all the stats. We even had um, when kids would, like, take the wiffle ball bat and be like Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader or, you know, or Jedi Knight. That was our saber metrics. And they would always be like, oh, I'll get you. <laughs> uh, one time, uh, Big Bob had a cord of wood delivered and dumped it right in the field, right in the middle of the field. Yeah. We were the only league where you had to stack wood before you could play.
Big Bob got warm by the fire, and we got hot at the plate. Home runs were definitely up that spring. And instead of the Bash Brothers, we would call ourselves the Romantic Fire Boys, taking the Wiffle Ball League by storm. Instead of a, you know, like a high five, we would do this. We would take like a fake pipe and go, very well done, sir. Yes, very well done. The crackling fire boys strike again. Ha, 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 ha. Cheerio. Get me a fudgical. Stuff like that. When they would, um, when we would score a run, they'd play our hype song, and it would go something like this. Uh, Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. The crowd would go crazy for that. And we would, uh, we would stack wood down in the, in the cellar, you know. So we wore White Sox gears, White Sox gear, but our socks were black because of all the soot. And when we loaded up the, the wood down cellar, it was right next to the uh, Mrs. B's pottery and kiln, you know. And I remember one year when I was turning nine, she gave me pottery for my birthday. Yep. She gave me a ceramic He-Man statue. You know, I loved that He-Man. <laughs> You know, it, I don't even think it was wrapped. I think it was just in like some newspaper, but it was already painted and already glazed. Yeah, she took the fun all out of it. If I was her son, I, I think I would be like, no, I can't. I'm not showing up with a ceramic key, man. I can't. And I bet she told him, well, no one else is going to give him this. He's not going to get one of these from anybody else. And if he does, it's not going to be painted and glazed. And if it is, it won't be painted and glazed this nicely. And, you know, it wasn't even in a, like, an action pose. It was a... Just a statue of He-Man, you know? It won't be painted that good. No one has her palette, you know? Nobody has the same palette as she does. By the power of Grayskull, she had the best palette for ceramic He-Man. I, I bet she had a backlog of them. That's why I got one for, for my birthday. You know... It would have been cool if it was like a, a, new, a new character, like Ceramic Tor, here I am, made of ceramic, play with me. And looking back, I wish I got it, and I wish I instantly smashed it right there at the birthday, you know. Because that thing stuck around in my sock drawer for way too long. I kept it, I don't know if my mom made me keep it in the sock drawer, because that would be give it most... Cushion for storage. I don't know why we were holding on to it. But I think one day just filled the sock drawer with too many socks and it just cracked. We can glue it. <laughs> My mom would think, would probably said something like that. But, you know, I would just like to say to Mrs. B, you know, they make an action figure style He-Man for a boy who's turning nine. Just keep that in mind for next time. You know, one that... Maybe you can, like, move the arms and it won't cut you when you move them too hard. But this He-Man had, had no moving parts. And she had Skeletor, too, and I would have preferred Skeletor.
We also had this one team that called the Chimneys. Cra and Billiard. Cra and Billard. It's a little weird name. And uh, we didn't call them the Chimneys because they helped stack wood. No, no. It's because they smoked during the games. <laughs> it was like having John Daly in your league, except these two were shunned by Hooters. Yeah. They weren't allowed back in there. And Craw used to take the slowest home run trot of anybody in the league. So slow. Every time. The other team would get so upset because he never hit a home run. Just slow motion running aimlessly around. We had no idea. And uh, when we let Craw pitch, we had to let him move up so he could reach home plate. And I don't know if he was too weak or too high to pitch, but we wanted those stats, and we got them. Then um, I thought all this wiffle ball playing would really help me out in high school, you know? That's a good skill to have. I remember in high school, the gym teacher and no one else, no one else cared. He was the, the only gym teacher that would do a, like a, a fake instant replay and then come out doing the home run, home run signal, something like. He's the only gym teacher I ever saw do that. It's good for him, you know. He used to call me Hank Simeonkowski. And only part of that is my real name. So back then, gym teachers could change your name and make you Jewish if they wanted to. That was one of their powers. They could do that. But once, um, once gym class ended and summer vacation started, we started playing more wiffle ball. And then uh, up came uh, the wiffle ball all-star game. It was like the, the event of summer of 91. Everybody showed up, and uh, there's one kid, he came in an Astros jersey. I was like, okay. And lettering wasn't a real big thing back then, so he wrote in Sharpie on the back of his jersey, Joey Smith plus Ramon Martinez. And we were like, is he in love with Ramon Martinez? Ramon Martinez is a professional baseball player. It's why the plus sign, you know? Did he harness the power of Ramon Martinez by writing this on the back of his shirt? We couldn't, we couldn't understand. And at the time, Ramon Martinez pitched for the Dodgers, so why an Astros shirt? He not now, none done ever, played for the Astros. And this was the, the same kid that um, hosted a tournament at his house. And um, the tournament wasn't going his way, you know. So he took the grand prize, a wax box of 89 Topps baseball cards, up to his room. And he yelled out the window, I'm opening all the packs, Russell. So then, of course, Russell storms off, runs up there. And uh, I hope he got some good cards. I'm still waiting for my fudgicle from that tournament, though. Yeah, I think that's all I got for tonight. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, Plymouth. Good night. My Sherry Amore, am I giving you a ride? I'm giving you a ride home tonight.
Is your shop car in the shop again? You know you really should have that car fixed. The guy from the car place keeps calling the house. <laughs> My Sherry Amore. I heard BK has Oreo cookie pie now. Would you like to split an Oreo cookie pie? And then I'll look you in the eye and say, why did you eat all the pie? I really wanted some of that pie. And then I'll say, my Sherry Amon, how long you gonna work at Burger King? I think you should probably get another job now. You haven't made manager yet. And you've been there quite a while. <laughs> Ma chérie mo. That's a very, very French way to do it. I don't know why I did it like that. What else? What else is it again? <laughs> My sherry more. Did you eat a little bag of cookies? Does Burger King even have them little bags of cookies? I bet it wasn't really satisfying for you. You can really eat a lot of cookies. <laughs> mm. I don't know. When are they going to bring back that home style baconator with the that's me. <laughs> when are they going to bring back the patty melt home style burger like I like that I ate after my surgery because you threw a rock and hit me in the head. We were just playing dirt bombs, but that one had a rock in it. We've had a really tumultuous relationship. I haven't seen you in 30 years, but I hope you're doing very fine. I bet you've hit the big 5-0 by now. That's probably, that's probably too much. <laughs> yeah, let's leave it there. And uh, it's time, I got to go pick up my DoorDash Burger King. Thanks.